Good morning and a very warm welcome to you all to our service this morning from St Mary's Redbourne on this the 16th Sunday after Trinity. Feel very welcome wherever you're joining us from. We're going to begin our service with the hymn, Ye Holy Angels Bright. the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ with us now, let us first call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfil them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. 
Our first reading comes from the book of the prophet Ezekiel and is read for us by Kari. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? It is not your ways that are unfair when the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity. They shall die for it, for the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they have committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. This is the word of the Lord.
Our gospel reading is read for us this morning by Lois. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and he went. Then the father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, You did not change your minds and believe him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The most precious gift we have received from our Jewish Christian tradition is the same too for Islam in its purest form, is the concept of truth. God is one. On that the Abrahamic faiths agree, but God is also true, utterly reliable, one whose word can be trusted without question. All of us have been brought up on that. It's the foundation of our understanding of reality. One of the the greatest and most tragic losses of our increasingly secular society is that truth, if not completely lost, has become seriously compromised. I remember in the 1990s being deeply shocked when Robert Armstrong, the cabinet secretary, so the chief civil servant advising the prime minister, coined the phrase, being economical with the truth. No, he defended himself. He had not been lying. He had merely been economical with the truth. That, in my book, saw the beginning in in recent British politics, and so in our national life, of the slow slide towards manipulating the truth. In a country which, for all its faults, had always been at the forefront 
of standing up for justice and the rule of law. Our national integrity began to slip into the gutter. And now, 30 years later, we have our government, something which would be un have been unthinkable just 10 years ago, proposing a parliamentary bill that it admits would fly in the face of international law. It's outrageous and senior figures of any integrity and of all parties and persuasions are standing up against it. You have noticed I haven't even mentioned the repeated hijinks of the so-called leader of the free world over the Atlantic and one who claims to believe in the Christian God continually twisting the truth to suit his own personal political agenda. Now these aren't just political issues, let alone philosophical niceties. They matter to us all. They affect the way we think, because through the media we're constantly battered by spin or fake news. And increasingly in our society, truth is become interpreted to mean whatever each individual person or each tribal group chooses to make of it. The Bible is grounded in the fact that truth is objective, not subject to the whims of those who want to twist it to their own devices and that truth expresses the very nature of the God in whom we believe. The New Testament even affirms that in the person of Jesus, this truth was incarnated, took human form. In the beginning was the Word, from before time began, God, by his trustworthy word, existed. And the word was made flesh. Upon this reality, the whole edifice of our faith is built. If we lose touch with that, our very foundations start to shake. The Old Testament prophets fiercely defended the truth against all attempts by religious and secular leaders to twist it for their own purposes. I remember from my student days that pithy po poetic couplet with which this morning's reading from the prophet Ezekiel began. He's reminding the people of the well-known proverb, the parents have eaten the sour grapes and the children, children's teeth are set on edge. Or in other words, the parents have sinned and their children must suffer the consequences. But the prophet says, no, this shall no longer be so. For each person, each child, each parent is responsible for his or her own behaviour. In the ultimate judgment of God, each of us stands before God in his own right. And God is righteous, always trustworthy. This is, of course, both reassuring and challenging. It is reassuring because we know that God is a loving Father and can be trusted. It is challenging because we all have to accept responsibility for our own actions. And all the prophets after Ezekiel and much of what was written in the later part of the Old Testament taught this 
personal responsibility. And John the Baptist and Jesus himself continued in the same vein. Repent and believe the gospel, the good news. Turn your life right round and trust that God is faithful, worthy of our trust. That is the rock on which we build our lives. Perhaps this seems a long way from the Brexit agreement, little to do with fake news, but they and we are integrally connected. How we behave, how the Church of Christ is seen to behave, not only have consequences for our own place in God's eternal kingdom, they have con consequences for the future integrity of society. But what can little I do to make any difference? With the Holy Spirit of God inside us, we can transform the world. We have to believe that. We are called to be faithful within the small confines of our own lives. William Blake, that great mystical poet, once said, he who would do good to his neighbour must do it in minute particulars. So do we always tell the truth to those closest to us, to our neighbours? Are we scrupulously honest in our shopping? or our tax returns? Or are we sometimes economical with the truth? We give ourselves all kinds of excuses and sometimes the half-truth may be the kindest response in a sensitive situation. But it can so often be a let out and lead to further grief in the long run. And when we find ourselves out in our dishonesty, let's look it straight in the eye. Confess it to the one who is the truth. And if possible, put right any damaging consequences of our actions. Throughout history, there have been people who have stood firm for truth despite the consequences. Even today, there are repeated reports of Christians who, rather than adopt the soft option by outright denial or even by half-truths, face torture and death for the sake of Christ. Their example is such a challenge we owe them so much, far more than we can ever comprehend. For as Tertullian said in the, in the third century, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. The church of God has been secured on the back of their sacrifices. And it is still true today. We have to accept our responsibility. The ongoing survival of the church depends upon our faithfulness. That's the glorious privilege and the huge responsibility we have. The future integrity of our society depends on the truth. It depends on our being faithful to what we know to be true faithful to the one who is the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. If the Son, who is the truth, sets you free, you will be free indeed.
Together, let us affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our virtual choir sing the anthem, The Lord is My Shepherd, the setting of Psalm 23 to the music of Howard Goodall. Our prayers of intercession this morning are led for us by Andy. Let us pray. 
Lord of Truth, we pray for your Church. We come to you and seek your face during a time when the truth of your word seems to be attacked on every side. You promised that your Holy Spirit would guide your children into all truth, especially those that seek you with their whole hearts. Keep us, we pray, and guide us in our lives as we read and hear your word. Give wisdom to discern your truth to all those in authority in your church, especially all bishops, priests and deacons. We pray particularly for the ministry team at Redbourne, that they may serve you with true hearts and bring your word to the people of our village. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of truth, we pray for your creation. We hold before you the world in all its beauty and wonder and pray that we can work together to protect and preserve it for the future. We pray for the waters of the world, that they may be restored to health and filled with bountiful life. We pray for the earth's soil, that its riches may be protected to assure abundant harvests for all. We pray for all creatures who share earth with us, that their beauty and diversity will be preserved. We pray for wisdom and truth for decision makers in Britain and around the world, that we may find creative and just solutions to protect all of creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of truth, we pray for our community. We ask for a flourishing community where neighbours learn to love each other and know the truth of Jesus Christ. We pray that we can be stewards of your truth and love in the village, and it may be a place where all are welcomed. We pray for all those who are in authority in our region, for all councillors and local officials who have to make difficult decisions in these difficult times. Give them wisdom and guide them in truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of truth, we pray for those who are sick and those who suffer. For all in nursing homes and hospices in our region and for those who are housebound. We remember especially those named in our service sheet today. We pray for those affected by COVID-19, either through illness or the anxiety that this virus has caused. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of truth, we hold before you those men and women who have died recently or whose year's mind falls at this time. You know our hearts and share our sorrows. We are hurt by being parted from those whom we love when we are angry at the loss we have sustained, when we long for words of comfort, turn our grief into truer living and to a true and certain hope in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Receive this sign of peace. We sing together the hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love is the fulfilling of the law. Grant that we may love you with our whole heart and our neighbours as ourselves through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for the sheep, draw you and all who hear his voice to be one flock within one fold, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace.
to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.